Welcome to the Ardor SEO Real Estate Marketing Podcast. Join us as we explore the latest marketing trends in real estate, discuss effective tactics for driving leads, and provide actionable advice from some of the top realtors in the US to help you streamline and skyrocket your real estate marketing efforts. Tune in to the Ardor SEO Real Estate Marketing Podcast and take your real estate business to the next level. Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode. With me today, I have David Baton, is the co-founder and CMO at DoorLoop, known as the easiest property management software out there. His ability to understand market needs and develop innovative solutions have helped him create multiple successful businesses. David's passion for technology and innovation is now present on the Ardor Real Estate Marketing Podcast. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure, our pleasure. So, so the audience knows David was te- for 10 minutes prepping his studio for this podcast. So this one is for real. So <laughs> grab <laughs> yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. um, first of all, David, what we like to uh to kick uh to kick this off is with a story. So please, David, tell us, tell us your story. Tell us how how did Door Loop find light? Yeah, so I guess my my story quickly, my life story. I born and raised in New York, Long Island, moved to Miami, Florida 21 years ago, uh, pre-COVID in 2002. So I've been here for about 20 years. Um, studied here, University of Miami, fell in love with marketing, took my first marketing class at college, fell in love with it, then just started doing marketing for the rest of my life, the last 15 years, loving every single day of it, and uh, just consuming a lot of books, information, and putting it to practice. So this is actually our third SaaS software startup. Uh, The real estate industry is obviously very big, huge market, great potential for disruption. And one of our co-founders was actually looking for software to manage his own rentals. And he couldn't find anything easy, affordable. A lot of the other programs were built 20 years ago. So he said, we have to build this. We can do it better because we've had that background ready in software development. And uh, sure enough, here we are a few years later doing it better and and growing really quickly, fortunately. Nice. Yeah, fortunately. And so when, when yeah. did uh, Door, Door Loop um, start? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Yeah. So, I mean, we, la- we only launched it two years ago, April 2021, but we've been building it for a few years before that. But it's just been explosive growth in two- April actually will be two years. And uh, so next, well, I don't know when you're going to be launching this, but April 2023 is two years. And uh, in two years, we have almost 100 people working with us right now and hundreds of thousands of units managed on the platform from people logging in from over 103 countries worldwide. So it's been an awesome roller coaster ride and, and still going strong. That's incredible. Well, you can you can tell me the birthday, and maybe we'll launch this on on Dora Loops uh, on Dora Loops birthday. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. I'll have to get the exact date, but I'll find I'll find out for you. Yeah, no, no, the exact hour as well. <laughs> oh, hour. Okay, perfect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, David, uh, from your fifteen years of experience in in marketing, um, you're pretty much an expert in uh, in a multitude of of fields, right? Uh, what I want to focus on uh, today is something called landing page uh, optimization. Uh, so, so we put this in, in, a, in a real estate perspective and so our agents in, a, in our audience can understand. So imagine there's, there's this scenario, someone right has a website and they're getting a lot, of, a lot of visitors, right? And they're getting a lot of traffic, which is a good indicator, yep. but they are not capturing leads, meaning they're not bringing any business. What, uh, in your uh, perspective, is um, the steps to to turn this around? So, yeah, it's actually a great question. And, um, you know, I say this a lot. Let's say there's a thousand people coming to your site a month, which would be great. But let's make it easy. A hundred people come to your site a month, but only uh, three fill out the contact form or become a lead or whatever you want to call it. What are, what is happening to the other 97% of them? What are they not finding? So I love to do a few things to find out. Number one, I love adding a little survey. There's actually tons of companies that do it, a lot of free ones. Uh, the one that I use is called Hotjar, H-O-T-J-A-R.com. And they will install a free survey that pops up after 10 seconds in the site and just ask someone, what are you looking for? 
What can you not find? What can you help? What can we help you with? What questions do you have? Any any of these kind of questions. And you can give them a multiple choice, like drop down list, or they can just type in whatever they want. And you're sort of doing like a focus group survey on your own website and kind of seeing what they're looking for. That's number one. Number two, I love installing a live chat on the website that will pop up after 15 seconds, like on doorloop.com, we do it. And just ask a simple question. Is there anything you're looking for? Anything we could help you with? Anything like that? And if they respond and you happen to be on the computer or on your phone, you can respond in real time. The goal is to respond in under one minute before they bounce or, or leave your site, they call it. Mm -hmm. um, if not, if you're not available, the chat bot after let's say 30 seconds of inactivity on your end, will ask them, it looks like we're not available right now. Please leave us your phone number, name, and email address, and we'll get back to you. So it's a more informal way of talking to people. And we found greater success with getting more people to respond, leave us their emails that we can contact them instead of them going to the contact us page. So those are two big things I, I highly recommend to everyone. No, nah, so you, you came in strong, man. You you get already two really nice pieces of advice, yeah. very actionable, right? This is something, yep. and this is uh, stuff that I love to talk about on, on the podcast because we can go on about the gibberish and technicalities <laughs> Uh, here and there and the coding yeah. whatever uh yeah. but th these solutions that they're they're easy they're like yep. in the face they are out, they are out there yep. and like I'll, yep. I'll repeat for everyone so it's the hotjar.com uh it's the survey that uh, automatically pops up and you can you can edit you can edit that right for the questions that you want to ask yep. Yep, you can make up your own questions. And then the second one is the live chat there's tons of live chat providers out there we use intercom there's also drift there's, uh, I think Zendesk has one. If you just Google live chat for your website, you're going to find tons of them. Now, if you're using a certain platform like Wix or WordPress, for example, or maybe Squarespace, whatever it is, a lot of them have live chats built in. You just have to enable it. Or on WordPress, for example, they have like a marketplace or plugins. Just search for live chat. You're going to find hundreds and they're all pretty similar. They're all pretty much the same. You just want to make sure that it pops up on your computer and on your phone. So the live chat should have also a phone app because you always have your phone and you could respond in real time. Yeah, and, and this can be a game changer on uh, on a real estate um website. Yes. Literally, literally. Big time. Big time. Um the the other things that we can use right to to capture leads are um a call to actions. Like what what type of of CTAs, well, CTAs is what the marketing guys use. What, what type of uh, call yeah. to actions um should be used on on, on a landing page to capture that lead? So great question. So like you said, CTA stands for call to action, which in simplistic terms just means it's a button. So when someone comes to your website, the number one thing you want to do is guide them towards that one action that you want them to take on your website. So if you go to doorloop.com, for example, our one action is get a demo. And you're going to see that button literally everywhere. It's our number one main action. So that's called your primary CTA, your primary action. Now you could also have a secondary action, which is your second button, not as prominent, let's say, which for us, let's just say is contact us. So we want you to get a demo, but if you don't want to get a demo, you contact us. Now, for a realtor's website, obviously you are looking for people that want to rent space from you or buy a place from you. So your number one contact might be view our listings. See everything that we have to offer. Maybe you're pulling it from MLS. Maybe it's your own listings. And your secondary call to action could be contact us. The problem that I see people doing is there is no clear call to action. There is no clear action item. There is no clear button on their websites. And they have 30 links everywhere. So as a visitor, you're overwhelmed. You're not sure what should I be clicking on? What should I be doing next? So you always want to get them to that one action. So my number one advice, make that one action very clear on the very top header, which is basically the top of your website make it very clear button. And at the bottom of every single page in your website, which is called the footer, you also want to have a call to action there that says, you know, contact us or whatever, or view my properties or showings, listings, whatever it is. So top of the site, middle of the site also, if you can, and bottom, and not just to keep, you know, pitching door loop here also, but you can, if you want to see how it's done correctly, just go to our <laughs> homepage and you will literally see it is everywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and this is something that right you can put uh on your your listing page, 
in a in a, in a property page, even yep. even in on your blog, right? So you want people if 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 your blog article is uh, ranking uh, for some reason, and you get yep. you get some more organic visitors. Do you really want them to spend five minutes reading about the top five restaurants in in Boston and then they leave and then right. like and then that's it? I don't think it's very valuable. So, and for someone, if someone leaves your website, like they're not gonna come back. No, so it's no, correct crucial to to get to get that lead. Yeah, and you know it's funny you mentioned the blog. Um, we get over three million visitors a year to our blog right now. So. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. Um, so the blog is definitely a very big source for us. You know, if you search Google for any of the main keywords, at least for our business, like property management software, stuff like that, we are top five for almost all those big keywords and a, and a lot of blog posts. So a blog is amazing. If you ever want to do SEO, what they call it, search engine optimization, which basically means you want your website to be in the top of Google when people are searching for it. The number one easiest way you can get there is by writing blog posts. We can talk for hours about that. Um, yeah. we, won't have, we won't have enough time, but if you're going to do it, do it the right way. My best advice, since you don't really know most likely how to write a super SEO optimized blog post, is to outsource it. And there's a website called Upwork.com, which has that millions of freelancers that can write you great SEO optimized blog posts. And there's another website I'll give you a little, a little secret just for just for this podcast is rankingarticles.com, ranking dash. There's a dash, a hyphen, articles.com. That's what we use. And we've done probably hundreds um, of blog posts with them and they're very good. So that's number one. Number two, just speaking about call to actions, you also want to make the button very clear, very visible and make it pop, have a lot of contrast to your website. So it's got to be a different color that clearly stands out. So if your website is blue, let's say blue background, you don't want another blue button as your call to action. It's not going to stick out. You don't want something dark like black. You want something bright, pink, green, complementary colors that just really stand out. So that's another thing. Nice. And yeah, that, that, that was actually a question that uh, I wanted to ask and you, uh, and you put a, a pin on it, uh, is that this SEO game, right? It can, it can become a, a, bit, a bit complicated. Uh, yeah. And you, you did just mention Upwork. Upwork, it's it's incredible yeah. how much shit you can get done in, <laughs> on Upwork. I would say yeah. it's pretty much you could almost run a company on yeah. uh, on on Upwork. And yeah. uh, I don't I don't know about rankingartists.com, but it, it sounds it sounds great, like like yeah. you're telling me. But so in this uh, SEO game, like is this something an agent? Um, should do by themselves or or partner up with with an agency like in your in your opinion so in my opinion no one should be doing this themselves unless they're willing to invest hundreds of hours and learning to figuring out themselves but the other reason is it's not usually worth your time so you want to know what your hourly rate is to you and then see if it's worth it for you to do it yourself because there's an opportunity cost or outsource it now, if someone works themselves, they don't pay themselves an hourly salary. So the easy math is, let's say how much you make a year. Let's say it's $100,000 a year to make math easy. Divide that by two, which is 50. And that is your hourly rate. Okay. You make 100,000 a year, $50 an hour is your typical hourly rate, let's just say. Okay. Because there's about 2,080 working hours a year. So that's how you come to the calculation. Mm -hmm. But long story mm -hmm. short, $50 an hour. So now ask yourself, how long will it take you to write a really, really, really good blog post after you spend 100 hours researching how to do it? Let's say it's four hours. So four hours times 50 an hour is $200, but you can outsource that blog post for $50 instead of $200. And sure, it's not going to be as good as yours, but then they do 90% of the work. And then you come in and spend 20 minutes cleaning it up and making it better. So it's just not worth your time and you're probably not going to do it right. So outsource to the pros. Blog post is the number one way to go. It's the easiest way to go. Um, and if you have a bigger budget, you could definitely hire like a marketing agency. We've personally used a few. One that we used is uh, caspmedia.com. They can, they're like full service, Google ads, social media ads, content, websites, landing pages, all that stuff they can do for you if you have a bigger budget and you want to blow up your company. Nice. Yeah, I have I have a saying, not not me. I heard someone on, on the podcast say this is is delegate what you hate. Well, this is something <laughs> oh, that I love that maybe you're not particularly hating, but uh it's something that you should for sure delegate. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um for me, it's mostly just like it's not worth your time. 
you know, yeah. tell, you know, how long will it take you to write a hundred blog posts? 500 hours. <laughs> it's just not worth your time. <laughs> it's not worth your time. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if we can go back a bit to uh, the the landing page uh, optimization, and we, we kind of want to put some 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 tracking into it, right? So how can someone track like user engagement on uh, on the landing page so so they know yep. if yep. The, they're, they're doing our is correct or they need to change? Yep. So just to explain first, what is a landing page? So typically, most people are coming to your homepage. And that is the number one, by far, most important page on your entire website. Your homepage, you can say, is a landing page. Landing me because people are landing on that page. That's why it's called a landing page. So your homepage should be super optimized for conversions, for driving people to schedule a call, request a call, have a question for you, whatever, whatever your primary action is. Now, another type of landing page is if you're running ads, let's say Google ads, you want to send people to a custom landing page, a different page in your site, just for that one ad. So let's say you are a property management company and you have two types of customers. One type is tenants that are coming to your site looking to rent properties from you. Another type of customer is property owners, landlords, real estate investors that want you to manage it for them. So you have these two different people now, let's say you're running ads on Google ads, okay? And one of your ads is targeting tenants and the other ad is targeting these owners, okay? And let's say you're not even running Google ads, but on your website, you have these two different people and customers coming to your site. So you wanna create two different pages just for them that speaks to them, that speaks to their pain points, speaks to the benefits, speaks about what you can offer them, how you can help them. So you're creating two different pages on your site in this example, and you wanna optimize it for conversions. What that means is you want to make sure that the message on the top, which is called your hero H1 header text, the big messaging on top is exactly what they're looking for, the pain point, how you help, how you help them. And normally it's, you know, they are moving away from pain or they want to make more money or whatever it is. So you want the message to be very clear. Number two, the clear call to action, obviously, which which could be different for every type of person. And then number three is just playing with different things on the page, changing the text out, changing the buttons, changing the colors, changing the images. There's a million different things you can do to A-B test, so to speak, your page. And I think it might, it might be a good time to go into A-B testing. Is that okay? Yeah, go on. <laughs> uh, okay. We'll go on a roll. Like as much more as you're talking and I'm listening, it's, okay. it means that our audience is listening as well. Okay, okay. So so I mentioned this word A-B test. What does that mean? That means you have two different versions of that homepage, of that landing page, of any page of your website that you want to test and see which one does better. So you have version A and you have version B. So in our case, it's doorloop.com slash one, that's our version one, and doorloop.com slash two, that's our version two. And that's called a split test. You have two different pages and the traffic, the visitors, 50% are going to one version and 50% are going to another version. And this might start getting a little bit technical or confusing for you, but all you need to do is once again, go to hotjar.com. And I'm pretty sure they can run A-B tests with you. Or also Google Optimize is a free one. And we actually use Google Optimize, it's great. And it just helps you do these kind of tests. Now, your next question could be, what am I testing? So I said buttons, colors, text, anything you can imagine. And number two, what am I looking for? What difference should I be measuring against? So whatever your primary call to action is, let's say it's contact us. That's your main button. So on version A and version B, you're measuring how many people, what percent of visitors are clicking on that button and actually submitting that form. So version A, let's say 100 people come to that page, five people contact you. That's a 5% conversion rate. But 10 people contact you from version B, maybe because the button looks different. That's a 10% conversion rate. You've overnight just doubled the number of business you just got, the number of leads you got, the number of the, uh, the revenue you're going to make overnight, just from a simple A-B test experiment. And it's so powerful. And the more you do it, the more you optimize, it's it's unbelievable how much gains it can make on your business. I mean, so for us, that's that's a huge part of our business. If we can increase anything 10%, wow, that's that's massive. And same thing for your business too. 
Yeah, and I think it's just complete that also in terms of um, the budget that you're planning to to spend on on a certain uh, strategy, right? You should always start with A/B testing and with little uh, investment. And once you know who what is uh, who is the winning page, right? Uh, so yep. we know that number two is, is the winning page. There's yep. th that's the page you're going to put your your money in, right? One hundred percent. And it doesn't only have to apply to you know paid marketing if you're doing Google Ads. Even if you're not running any ads right now, um, and you're getting a lot of traffic to your website, you can easily just A B test your homepage or spe certain pages on your site, like your listings page, your contact page. You can easily do that. And if this is starting to get over your head, that's when it's time to bring in an agency that they they can help you with this or outsource it on Upwork. Um, if you are serious about this. Yeah, and if I, if, if I can just end up this A-B testing, it's another idea, we, we actually uh, use that and advise uh, all our clients to do that, is to use A-B testing on the newsletter. So imagine your newsletter has 5,000 contacts there. You, you yep. make up three different emails. Uh, imagine you have a certain topic you want to send your newsletter about. You create three different emails. You send out those three different ones. Yeah, and you you grab only maybe on one thousand of those five thousand, and yep. and you, you split for the three of them. So that's three hundred thirty thirty three, and then there's yep. one left. It can be it can be the CEO of the company, and yep. then whoever wins uh, the email that wins takes the other four thousand. So yeah, uh, we do that, and it's uh, like it it has helped us uh, hugely to increase our uh, open rates and conversion oh, rates yeah. also. On, on I know email marketing is a whole different episode as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I love that you brought that up because A-B testing applies to every single thing for your business. Email campaigns, websites, we use it across the board for, for literally everything also. If you're running ads on Google ads, you shouldn't just run one ad. You should run two ads and see which one does better. So that methodology applies to everything. And then just one big thing I will say about emails, two big learnings that I've that I've learned on emails. We have A-B tested two versions of an email. One that is just a plain text. It looks like it's coming directly from me that I sent it for you from my Gmail. Another one is like a really nice, beautiful, fancy designed email. Which one works better? Which one do you think? Uh, I would say the most friendly one though. Yeah. Yep. The personal one. They think it's coming yeah. from me. Um, instead of the fancy marketing design email, even though that, yeah. that fancy design email took us 50 hours and it looks beautiful and it's amazing. <laughs> it it doesn't work well. So that's number one, make your email simple. You don't need anything. Don't go into MailChimp and make fancy designs. It's really not needed. Just simple text-based emails that could take you three minutes to write are just as effective, if not more effective. And then number two, speaking about subject lines. So what we've learned is the shorter, the better. So let's say someone contacted our company and we might email them saying the, the subject might be following up on your door loop demo. That's a six word, let's just say subject line. We've tested that versus just using the word door loop in the subject line, for example. And just one word does so much better than anything else you could ever put in your subject line. So make it way shorter in the subject line. Yeah, and, and that that actually that one word strategy is actually calling out something. It's calling out the mystery, right? So people yes. door loop like, what is yes. this? Yes. Uh, so people like will click on it. W whereas if on the subject line they have following up with door loop, blah blah blah. Okay, I, I already know the subject. Uh, I already know the topic yep. of the email. I'm not gonna open if I'm Correct. not interested. Whereas Correct. if you're interested or not, you're still gonna open a door loop email and then maybe you can turn the interest around, right? Because correct. Yeah, there's a lot of people that they don't open emails, some they open, they yep. um go through them or don't go through them, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's, but but by the by the way, I mean just to, to finish off the topic on email marketing. So the same principles apply for everything. You're also going to have one call to action on your email. So when you're sending an email to someone, you don't want it to be super long. No one's going to read it. 20 links to click on. No. There should always be one main call to action on the email that you're trying to get them to do. Reply back, contact you, schedule a showing, whatever it is, one main call to action for every email. Yeah, that's an important thing. Yep. Otherwise, uh, again, why are you sending an email? <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, and, and I just want to add one last thing. So go, go. if you have other, if you have partners, other co-founders, 
there's always going to be disputes. I think we should do this. No, I think we should do this. The website should say that. The button, the button should be this. The color should be that. It happens all the time. Who wins? Usually the one who yells the loudest and the other one that just gives up. But with A-B testing, the winner is whoever you just, you just A-B test both, both, um, both options, right? So I think the color should be blue. You think it should be green. Let's test it. We'll run a test and who, and whichever one wins is best for the business. So that's, that's how you solve almost all disputes, just A-B testing everything. Yeah. So I guess I think people will come out of here. Okay. I'm going to start A-B testing everything. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know what TV, I don't know what TV to buy. I'm going to buy two TVs <laughs> and then I'll see which one is better after a week. And then I'll return the other. <laughs> hey, pe people do that. You know, <laughs> thanks. Thanks to Amazon free returns. It's easy to AB test products also. Yeah. <laughs> so I always buy double. I always buy double. <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I don't know about that, but yeah, yeah. You get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'm kidding. I think yeah. our audience, they're smart enough to, to understand, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so last, last question, David is actually an introspective one. We try to, we try to be superior to the artif artificial intelligence that is trying to tame us. So what do you what do you feel you need to improve and what are you doing about it? What do I feel we need to improve as a company with AI? You, you that, as, as David. Me. No, no. Uh, uh, don't forget about AI. AI. Oh, okay, what? okay. Because I can, I can talk about AI for eight hours. You want to go into chat GPT? <laughs> we, we can go into chat GPT also. <laughs> uh, let's, yeah. let's not start on that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that I'm saying like yourself, yourself, David. So like, what do you feel you need to improve? And what, what are you doing about uh, that improvement? Yeah. So one of the big things that we're looking at, that I'm looking to improve on, but it's like very, very, very advanced marketing is buyer journeys, buyer personas, multi-funnel attribution, full funnel visibility. All these buzzwords probably mean nothing to people that are listening, but basically we're trying to do a better job and it's a great lesson for everyone. Targeting and tailoring and customizing our content and our messaging to every different persona, every different buyer that's coming to our website. So for people listening, if they are residential property managers, which is one type of customer, but we also have commercial landlords, totally different customer. So when you come to our site, we want you to see, oh, this is also for me. So we have landing pages for every single different type of buyer, you can say. And also the content now is going to get more targeted. So if you're residential versus commercial, you shouldn't be getting email campaigns from us or ads from us that talk about residential. You should be getting commercial ads, for example, commercial email campaigns, for example. So we're learning a lot about that and, and just kind of, it's all about delivering a better experience for the end customer at the end of the day. Yeah, and, and David is talking about this hard hard words and what it does in door loop, but this can also be applied, right? Uh, yep. On your website, if you if you work with listings and uh, yep. like you're, you're looking for buyers and sellers at, at the same time, like there's, it's two different journeys. It's two different yep. um, paths they need to, they need, they need to make. So if you manage to separate those, that's, that's game changing. Exactly. Exactly. And then that, that, that goes across the board. So like different pages on your site, email campaigns, if you have like a, a drip nurture email series, which just, is, just means that you put someone into this email campaign and they're going to get one email every week for the next 10 weeks, you have 10 emails planned. Those 10 emails should be different for every different type of person, basically. Yeah. So thanks, David. I think thank you. They, I think the agents right now, they have a lot to study on. Um, <laughs> yeah. If they're taking notes, it's probably a, a full page on. So um, I think we can stop from, from for now. So we don't, awesome. we don't create too much episodes from this. So <laughs> how can, uh, uh, how can people get a hold of you, David? Yeah, I mean, the best way, if they're interested in property management software for running their own property management business, or if they have their own rentals, they can definitely just come to doorloop.com and get a demo, primary call to action, or they can contact us, secondary call to action, so they can do any of those. We also have a live chat, obviously, so they can just chat in with us. Um, if they want to reach me directly, please, I love giving advice, marketing advice, Send me your website. Uh, I would love ripping it apart. Just no hard feelings, hopefully. <laughs> it's uh, it's david at doorloop.com. You could also reach out to me on LinkedIn. 
And if you're a realtor and you don't manage your own properties, but you have investors that do, that are buying properties for you, we have a really, really good referral program right now that's offering $500 for every single referral once they sign up. So um, yeah, contact us. We'll be happy to help. It's amazing, David. And yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And I do hope uh, that you continue to to trash websites as, as people sending on to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's my favorite part of the job. But uh, no, th thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it. My pleasure.